I've got literally just this afternoon to get this thing cross country worthy. I'm going to Florida and I have to get this thing there somehow and uh, it's in no shape to do so. I'm already exhausted. It's like 5 p.m. I'm leaving tomorrow morning. It's got a bad front wheel bearing. As you can see, the back end is sagged down. Let's have a look at that. This leaf spring, you can see the second from the bottom one, that cracked and broke and fell out a long time ago. So we're, we've got a broken leaf spring on the driver's side. So the whole truck kind of leans over to this side. And I mean, you might be wondering, hey, why is it, why is it loaded down? Why is it leaning to that side? Because I've got a thousand pounds worth of shit in here. These were all my projects that were on cue. Most of them to make videos about. I've got two transfer cases, drive shafts, uh, more leaf springs, a trailer hits, axle shafts, intake manifold. There's, there's like literally a thousand pounds worth of shit in here that I literally just have not had time to do because we've been moving out. And I want to tell you, I ain't going to throw away a thousand pounds worth of shit. I'm going to keep it and I'm going to put it all on someday. But uh, in the meantime, I've got, you know, until the sun sets tonight to uh, replace a wheel bearing and hopefully get some new, at least rear shocks on here. Because without good shocks and it loaded down this much, it's, it really sways really bad. Problem is I don't have new MJ shocks. I got new shocks for the front. Maybe I can do those. The front shocks are the exact same as the XJ. So I just took the ones out of the white Jeep uh, and replaced them with the ones I had from the wrecked Jeep. Now for the rear ones, I used to have these in the XJ. These are rough country zero to four inch lift shocks. Now, like I said, Comanche rear shocks are not the same as the XJs. They are three inches longer. And since these XJ shocks can go up to four inches of lift, these should work in the Comanche. That being said, though, the Comanche does not use a bar pin. So I need to cut this out. As you can see, I've already done on this one. So I'll put the shock in the vise right here. Try to get this thing as far over to one side as you can. And then... There we go. Okay, so with one side cut off, you can grab the other side, preferably with vice grips. With enough maneuvering, the bar pin slides right out of the bushing. Objective, remove this bolt. Now, that does not look like a very cooperative bolt. But I'm not allowed to use PB Blaster anymore because it makes a mess on the driveway. And the driveway can't be a mess if we're trying to sell the house. So I'm just going to have to pray to the heavens that this does not break. It seems to be spinning. The socket doesn't feel like it's got good enough grip on it. Though. It must be one size smaller. I was using an 18 millimeter. Now I got and 11 sixteenths. I don't know what size they're supposed to be. Oh, please don't break on me. Come on now. Yes. Okay, now for this lower one, which the 18 seems to fit on a little better. Okay, that one's coming off a bit easier. My, uh, this this isn't dirt in here. I almost ripped my finger off. I was putting the leaf springs in the new Jeep, in the white one, and uh, this finger got caught in the leaf spring hole and took the full weight of a leaf spring right on the tip of my finger right there. God, that hurt like hell for like a week straight, and I don't have feeling in the tip of this finger anymore. I must have nerve damage or something. Um, so my whole left hand is like weakened because I can't put any force on this finger. I don't know when that's going to heal, if ever. Eh. Time for the breaker bar. Hope I don't break this whole shock. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, previous owner did say he replaced the shocks and they do not look all that old. Holy Christ, look at how far down that went, dude. That is how loaded this sucker is. Let's hope we have the same fortune for the top one here. Yes, it looks like it. And there is one shock removed. 
just wanted to compare them real quick and yep, you know, side by side fully extended they are the exact same length and uh, the tube part is about the same so I think these will work sweet yeah these ones uh, they got a little bit of force left in them they certainly ain't good enough for hauling a thousand pounds of shit I think I'm gonna get the top part on first and then push up to get the bottom hole lined up probably not the best place to put force sideways force on a shock but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do okay I've got that installed loosely now let's try to get this on wait I might actually have to lift the whole body side of the truck up because I don't think this shock can compress far enough as is. All right. Against all odds, I got that sucker on there. One down, three to go. All right, I got both of them in there. And once again, those were four inch or zero to four inch lift shocks for an XJ. Now there's really no reason to put XJ rear shocks in a Comanche um, unless they're just the only thing you have laying around, which is, you know, which is my case. So they didn't really help the uh, ride height, but man, they certainly helped uh, to stiffen it up. I mean, this thing used to bounce like, uh, like it was a boat on water, but now it flattens right out. I'm sure that'll help a lot with the ride quality, especially in the back. All right, now I gotta replace this wheel bearing. Not too often I pull out the power tools. The brakes on the old Renix ones are secured with two 7mm Allen bits, peculiarly. I am pleasantly surprised in my past self because I've replaced these wheel bearing bolts before with uh, hex heads. They're usually 12.13 millimeters, but these are uh, the same thread pitch, except they're 19 millimeters. Now, I was going to replace the wheel bearings, as I might have mentioned earlier. Uh, when I did the whole front suspension overhaul, you might, you know, there's new ball joints, sway bars, tie rods. I basically overhauled the whole front suspension, but I didn't replace the wheel bearings because I was saving them for a different video. I was going to do these alongside the axle shafts when I bypassed the CAD system. That was going to be part 12, Operation MJ. You might notice if you look at the playlist, we're missing a part 12. <laughs> yeah, that's what that video was supposed to be, but I just never had the time. And so the damn wheel bearings never got replaced. Uh, so I already have new ones. I just got to get these out now. First, I got to take this out of here. That looks fun. Every tool is a hammer. There we go. This... Oh, yeah, and there should be a washer in there, but there's not. That, I believe, is a 36, shall we? Yeah, that's going well. Yeah, I'm going to put it back on a little bit. I would totally clean those threads up, but like I said... Ain't nobody want me using peanut butter because it makes a big mess on the driveway. Mmm, smells like, uh, yeah, burnt threads. Okay. Yeah, shit. I think it's definitely, yeah, look at that. Wow, how did that get so bad so quick? I mean, literally the last time I drove this, it was fine, like no noise at all. That thing is fried. I'm just pounding that whole thing off of there with the hammer, look at that.
Oh. Hmm. I just ripped that off of there with my bare hands. Yeah, that, that uh, probably wouldn't have been good to drive to Florida on that, huh? There we go. All right. Being so obsessed with Jeeps has its advantages because by mere sound alone, I was able to tell that wheel bearing was going out. Hopefully this will go back on here. Oh, mm. I don't know, man. Those threads are pretty jacked up now. I could try. Um. Hmm. I. Mm, I could try. But trying to force this nut back on here is just going to destroy the threads even more. Hmm. Cross-threading the axle nut is probably the last thing you ever want to do on any car. This thing, this is the nut that holds this bearing together. So the only option I really have is to replace this whole shaft, the stub axle. So wheel bearings gotta come back off, huh? Now the stub axle is attached to the inner axle by a U-joint here. And so basically I'd have to replace this whole thing. Now, as it happens, I saved the original stub axle off of the Reclaimer, the Rec Silver one. And now this one, because it's, it came out of an 01, it's got these thicker U-joints in here. Um, that side by side you can very clearly see the one on the left is a lot thicker than that one and I changed that in 1991 for the ABS models and 96 for the every other models so I'm gonna put this 2001 axle shaft in this 87 axle and because Dana 30s never changed throughout their very long lifespan the splines actually match and just like that I've got a new axle shaft next problem this plastic dust cap is making contact with the axle hole needs to be pulled forward a little bit or just removed I mean they really don't do anything they don't actually seal any part of the axle. That whole sealing job is done by the seal back in here. Uh, basically, I was just able to shove a screwdriver behind this thing and sort of push it forward a little bit. I don't know if this is a typical problem, but the original axle shaft that was on here used a metal piece that was like welded to the shaft itself right here. At some point down the line, they replaced said metal piece with a plastic cap. But like I said, these don't really do anything. I don't want to rip it off of there because it, it does keep the larger bits of debris out of there. But uh, now it should go on there all the way and it free spins now. Okay, so axle nuts torqued. I got the old cotter pin in there because I, I can't find my cotter pins. They must be packed up somewhere. You got to do what you got to do sometimes. Now, it is a little concerningly stiff to spin, but... It was sitting in the box for like a year. Maybe it's just got to get worked in a little bit. I don't know. We'll see, huh? So, put the rotor on. Then comes the pads. How about we go on a test drive and see what it does? And with the weight of a wheel on it, it, it spins a little bit better. It's still not perfect, but it's promising enough. Let's go for a drive. Well, I have news and bad news. The news is I seem to be able to drive. The bad news is it's still making that howling noise. So maybe both bearings went bad.
it's tomorrow and uh, it's still making that noise. I've replaced the other side and removed the front drive shaft to try and eliminate as many spinning bearing things as possible. Still making the uh, wheel bearing noise, but you know what? At least I got two new front wheel bearings on the damn thing now. Uh, so I feel a lot better than not having two front wheel bearings on the thing now. I just filled up with gas. I'm gonna go back home real quick, do my final packing things, and and then I'll be on my way. All right, MJ. Remember all those fond memories we had here. It's time to start some new ones. Come on, SpongeBob, you're just being shy. <laughs> what kind of place is this? I've only gone 90 miles, allegedly. I did not know I only lived 90 miles away from Illinois. That's kind of scary. Don't do it. Don't do it. You better stop. God, I, you know, ever since that guy T-boned me, I get so anxious when people just fly up to intersections like that. Oh, okay. Anyway, as I was saying, I still got a full tank of gas because uh, it'll burn like four gallons before it even starts registering on the gauges. So I must be getting pretty damn good MPG. It's doing pretty damn good so far. But Illinois is the longest stretch of a state that we gotta go through, and it's also the worst. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six miles. <laughs> oh, look at that, I'm at the highest point in the whole state. Oh, welcome to Peoria. Oh my God, people are so bad at driving here. It is, it's not even funny. It's like scary how how terrible people are at driving here. I just about got T-boned again. I was making a left turn at a three-way intersection that was a three-way stop and somebody from my left ran through the stop sign while I was mid left turn in the middle of the intersection. He ran through the stop sign and made a left turn right in front of me. What the hell is wrong with these people? Oh, so yeah, I just I just took a break here, you know? Just found a parking lot. I gotta, I gotta catch my breath. It's hot in here, man. I don't know how hot it is outside. But uh, I'm doing this bare bones, man. I ain't got no AC, I got wing window. I ain't got no radio, no cruise control, no traction control, no airbag. But she's making it, and I, I gotta get moving again before that engine gets too hot. You wanna be on YouTube? Do I wanna be on YouTube? Yeah, you, you wanna be famous? Yeah, I wanna be famous. <laughs> God, I wish. Oh, well, I gotta give them a status update, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, I made it to uh, the Illinois staging base with, uh, so far, no problems. I don't know, I didn't really look at it yet. I did hear some concerning noises from the underside a time or two. Probably bottomed out the leaf springs on these shit-ass Illinois roads. Hmm. <laughs> well, everything seems to look uh, as it did when I left. We still got an axle. Hmm. It's fucking hot in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it. Yeah, I know. My air conditioner doesn't work too well. That's your air conditioner right there. What are you doing? Yep. Why well, ain't going anywhere tonight? I gotta let it rest. It's tired. All right, Logan. Thanks for the couch, man. Onward. I already checked all the fluids and whatnot. We are still nominal. <laughs> Sounds normal. Super foggy today. You might be wondering, wait a minute, what's the big deal about taking this thing all the way to Florida? You know, you're just driving a Jeep to Florida. You've done it a million times, and I have done it a million times, but never in the Comanche. Now, this thing, like I said, is in no shape to drive down south. Uh, firstly, I think my main concern is the clutch. It's 
it's like 90% of the pedal travel doesn't do anything. It, it grabs at the last little bit of pedal travel. You can feel it. It's almost metal on metal. It's I, The clutch is done for. So I've been trying to not slip it. You know, I've been trying to at least keep rolling. Come to a full stop as little as possible. I guess my second concern is the transmission itself, the, the Peugeot transmission. It could just die at any moment. It sounds and feels like cereal. Any gear is is just as loose as neutral is. So there's that. Third concern is the rear axle pinion bearing. And well, I guess the whole rear axle because it's a Dana 35. The pinion bearing is so bad that the pinion seal does not seal and it's slinging gear oil all over the place. So that's two problems in one and, well, and it's a Dana 35. So that's three problems in one right there. Uh, and then there's the broken leaf spring. And uh, for minor things, it's got a cracked exhaust manifold. They all do. None of these things I can really fix on the side of the road, you know? Like if my rear axle explodes, I'm not gonna be able to just pull over and fix that, you know what I mean? So I stopped at McDonald's for some food, and uh, well, <clears throat> looks like I've got other problems to worry about too. And look at oil pressure, it was down here at like mm, 10, five to 10 PSI telltale sign of the engine overheating i don't know why but i did just fill up on gas and now the gas gauge is reading less than half so i don't know if any of this is related but uh i gotta sit here and let it cool down for a bit let's see where it's at right now okay yeah it's it's back to uh below 210 it seems like oh and there goes my fuel gauge starting to work they're so weird on these Renix models. The, the fuel gauges are just so, I don't understand them. <laughs> but yeah, since I'm at McDonald's, um, I figure I just, just sit here for a minute and I'm gonna try to figure out what's wrong with the damn thing. Uh, so first thing to check, there is still coolant in it. I don't see any leaks anywhere. Nothing's wet. It's not dripping anywhere not out of the radiator or anything the fan is still good the fan still got good resistance on it I think it just got a little hot there's still oil in it there's still plenty of oil in it now uh, I was just driving through some moderate traffic to get here moderate it wasn't really traffic but I was going slow um, I had her in fourth gear at about 30 miles an hour, so you know, I was only just coasting along at like 1100 rpm Really low engine speed means really low water pump speed. So maybe the coolant wasn't getting pumped through it fast enough I'm in a small town called Taylorville, Illinois. It's just south of Springfield But I guess Just let her cool down for a bit and uh, it's all good see how she does on the road and uh, try not to get into any more traffic I think we're ready for the interstate now bro what is this what is this place come on don't make me stop don't make me stop come on come on take her nice and easy there nice and easy oh my god Jesus you see how fast that guy took that turn? Holy shit. Whoo! Oh, a family video. Wow. Yeah, this place is it's like living out of a dream. It's a What is going on here, man? This is a place called Pana, I think. Pana, 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 Pana Illinois. So, I don't know. Something like that. In case any of my viewers are from Illinois, I just want you to know it's nothing personal. <laughs> As somebody who grew up in Wisconsin, it is just my sworn duty to despise Illinois. You guys ready for some interstate? I think she can handle it. She's been doing good so far, aside from that one hiccup. Oh, but it takes a while to get up to speed. Here we go, looking for a road.
road that's not under construction in Illinois. Huh. Road construction ahead. I just got out of road, but you can still see the cones of the road construction I just left. What's this? Right lane closed ahead? Oh, that's like the state anthem. Look, in its natural habitat, the state bird. Ohio River. Gentlemen, you know what that means. That means Illinois is officially in the rear view mirror. Woo! Kentucky! If this truck can survive Illinois, it can survive anything. Bring it on, Kentucky. I actually like Kentucky. It's pretty cool here. Okay, I've, I had time to kill, okay? And, but, oh my god, dude, look at this thing. 2001 and forever, man. God, this must be lifted like a foot at least. Jeez. <laughs> Holy smoke. And it's still got the 4.0 in it. Man, I bet this thing is slow as hell, unless it's got 513 gears in it. Jeez, man. No more leafs either. He got rid of the, there's a, well, I guess that is, it's kind of like a three link and a four link, I guess. Big old axle truss on probably a, this axle probably came off a damn diesel train tinted it's an automatic <sighs> so I don't know if the 4.0 has been modified but if it hasn't and this is an automatic and it's got these big ass axles and wheels in it oh my god <sighs> got a long way to go MJ He's got a visor on it, even. That is something else, man. All right, well, I just crossed into Tennessee. Look at me, I'm at Walmart again. I know I always end up back here. Uh, but the truck cigarette lighter is not charging my phone, so I had to uh, conserve battery a little bit. I'm gonna meet the parental unit in Clarksville. I'm like three hours ahead of them, so I'm just taking it easy. Also trying to conserve battery, so I'll report back in when I can charge my phone. Uh, well, you know, it is kind of nice to just sit down for a little while and uh, take a break from all that very stressful driving. It seems like the farther south you go, the worse people get at driving. It must be uh, the lack of snow. So I've just been playing Skyrim, and... Uh, I bought one of these inverter things that seems to be working. It, it must be something with the ancient electronics in this thing not necessarily cooperating with phones. I just had one of these and this wasn't charging my phone. So uh, this thing seems to be working. And it tells me how much battery juice the car battery itself has. So I got the volt gauge and, the, and that thing. Uh, it is pretty sweet. I just got it at, whoa, you guessed it, Walmart. You can also hook it up directly to the battery and charge stuff off of that. I've been sitting here for like an hour with this thing on, and uh, the truck's still got plenty of juice because it's just, you know, a tiny little phone battery. And uh, playing the greatest game of all time while I wait for the parents to get here. Oh, look at this. A hotel. What can I say? Living like Larry. Got this uh, average hotel here. I need a shower. My back is drenched. That bench seat, it may be comfortable, but it absorbs sweat like nothing else. Man, everything is drenched back here. That thing's leaking a lot of oil, man. Well, there they go. Now they'll be ahead of me. So I'm just checking everything over. Well, <laughs> this damn thing always comes unplugged. 
Um, it was low on coolant a little bit. I've put about a third of a gallon in here since I've left. I don't know where it's going, but uh, uh, it doesn't appear to be leaking anywhere. And it's it, wherever it is going, it's going there very slowly. Still good on oil. Oh, it's going to be hot today. Before I go anywhere, I ought to put some more fluid in that differential. It's a lot harder to crawl under it when it's so low to the ground. But yeah, that's all gear oil. It's getting on the exhaust and melting. It's getting back here. It's getting on the gas tank. It's just flinging everywhere. I think it might even be coming out of that vent tube. Kind of looks like it. <clears throat> that's definitely not a good sign. I have no idea how low it is. Well, let's find out. Uh, well, it took half of the bottle. So, uh, yeah, that is a pretty alarming rate to be leaking gear oil. Well, the good news about leaks is that you can just keep putting more in it and avoiding the real problem. So, we should be fine as long as I keep an eye on it. Welcome. Yes, yes, from a uh, Alexander City, Alabama. And you're like, Wayman, why are you in Alabama? I thought you were going to Florida, doesn't that? I mean you drive through Georgia and yes it does I decided to go through Alabama instead because I did not want to risk getting stuck in Atlanta traffic um, as we all know Atlanta always has traffic always there's never a day where it doesn't there's always some crash somebody's always dead and you get stuck in traffic for like three hours now this truck cannot handle being stuck in traffic for three hours so it's like an hour longer to go through um, Birmingham and then east to Tifton, but that was an hour longer I was willing to take because the only time I've driven through Atlanta and it wasn't completely backed up was uh, at night. And um, I don't want to wait until night to drive through Atlanta, especially in this thing. So I just filled up with gas and we're doing good. Everything, Everything's good so far. All systems are nominal, and oh, look where I am again. It's Walmart. They're like, uh, they're like havens for me. I... <laughs> there will be a storm ahead. Also, I don't know if anyone noticed I got a new windshield. I don't think I mentioned that yet. It had two big old cracks in it. Cue the flashback. I finally got a new windshield. There was a big crack in that corner and a chip in the middle. You know, it was probably the original windshield. But man, it's so shiny now. Look how shiny it is. Ah, which also means I finally get to have my rear view mirror back. Uh, well, of course, you know, as it is, uh, the, the mount they put on or that came with the windshield is different than this mirror's bracket. So it doesn't really go on there all the way. But it does go on there enough to stay secured. I hate this, this phone sometimes. Yeah, focus on the tree behind the mirror. Not what I'm trying to talk about. Yeah, look at that tree, everybody. Look at that tree that you can clearly see through this brand new windshield. Isn't it great? All right, so what I think they did was just put a 2001 windshield on this 87 Comanche because they are the same. The windshield never changed. Uh, but the rear view mirrors must have because my, I just ripped out the other one from the from the XJ. And it, it goes right on there with no problems, whereas the original mirror does not. So I'm just going to have to to buy um, a 2001 rear view mirror and then it'll be all good. Back to the matter at hand, it's actually pretty scary driving this thing when you can't see. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, I 
I'm being legit right now. I can see farther on my phone screen than I can directly through the windshield. Like the, the phone camera can see through the rain better than my eyeballs can. I think I'm just gonna hold the camera here and use it to drive. Well boys, there's the Georgia-Alabama border. Tastes like 85W140. There's a Dana 35 around here somewhere. With systems performing nominally, I would like to report that the Comanche has officially henceforth driven itself from Wisconsin to Florida. Hell yeah. Just like that. That's a damn good job, truck. I'm proud of you. Well, you know, I suppose we could say it's a happy ending. Got here in one piece, nothing exploded. That is a trek I don't think I'll make again anytime soon. That was exhausting. Uh, unfortunately, though, this is probably where it's going to be sitting for the coming amount of time. I don't know when I'll have the time, resources, or location to work on it. There's no paved roads here. There's no driveway. It's all just grass. I mean, not that that makes it impossible to work on, but uh, I've got to worry about getting the other Jeep down here and actually moving my ass down here. So I'm just going to ride with the parents on the way back and uh, here the MJ will sit until further notice. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you someday.